Mm. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday. Rose and Carter doing the job. Me, Johnny Rose, the other man's bully boy Carter. Tag team day, my pick this week. I chose Leilani Kai and Judy Marty and the Glamour Girls. Um, as far as lady tag teams go, them and the Jumping Bomb Angels are the two that jump out just because they're WWF time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. I hadn't fucking... When, I was surprised you went with these because I haven't really seen a whole lot of them, to be honest. I've seen them from the, like WWF, you know, like... I, I don't recall any specific matches. I know I've watched them, but I don't I can't remember like, oh yeah, I've seen them in this match on this night against them. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So very, I, very I, I, yeah. I chose them really because I'm a massive fan of the LPWA, the Ladies Pro Wrestling Association. And like Yeah, I, I think I might have um what channel was that on? It was on, was it like um it was either Bravo or was it Granada? Uh, not Granada. It could have been Granada, like one of the Sky channels. But it was like, you know, showing or lifestyle or something. It's a channel that's not around anymore. Who who was who was commentating for it? I'm trying to think. Se- there were several, like Joe Pedicino did some. Ken Resnick, who was a AWA and WF commentator. Um, Bob Winkle was on some. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter, Jim Cornette. Several. Yeah, I, the one I I definitely had seen some in the past. Like, uh, because I remember watching a promotion fucking, I'm going to say it was around about 98 I watched it. Um, I don't know how new they were or like how old they were back then when I watched it, but I remember Sergeant Slaughter being on them, so it must have been the same, like the same company. But, yeah. um, I, I messaged Malaya Husaka earlier because she's on one of them that I watched, and um, uh, I said that they were rerun what we because like the, the the LPWA was only sort of early to mid nineties, but it must have been sort of mid late nineties that I saw it. Yeah, you know. Probably towards the end of the nineties, like you said, ninety-eight time. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I was living near Blackpool at the time in Kirkham, and I used to. I remember it being on TV with Sergeant Slaughter. Mm. So definitely, yeah, it must have been the same promotion then. Yeah, yeah. that's the bulk of the reason why I chose these because I was a massive fan of that promotion. Because at the time, as well, at the time I saw it, I saw British lady wrestling, which was always the the best that I'd seen. You know, your Klondike Cates and your fucking, um, you know, Nicky Monroe and and uh, Princess Paula and that kind of thing were always, like, big for me because they were, they were British and, you know, I'd seen them live and that kind of stuff. Um, but then lady wrestling at that era on the WF was tits. And I like tits as much as the next man. <laughs> but I like wrestling probably more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, yeah, I, I felt like that because I never, I always used to, like, when you see all that shit in the WWF and that, and, like, people would be like, oh, well, it's great. Like, you know, you're a fucking young lad, but you should be wanting to watch that. But, like, I just fucking watched porn if I wanted to see that. Like, you know. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's, not, it's not what I tuned in to see. No. You know, if, if I wanted that, I would tune in for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would tune in to a different channel. That wasn't fucking advertising wrestling. Yeah, you know, I totally agree. Yeah, this the LPWA was like it focused on wrestling. It, it, it felt like a wrestling show with wrestlers on it, which sounds fucking stupid. It sounds ludicrous that a wrestling show has wrestling on it that focuses on wrestling, especially to fans that have never seen fucking wrestling. You know, because because wrestling ain't even called wrestling anymore, is it? It's fucking WWE, it's WWE, and you can't even say wrestling, but. I really, I really liked it, and you could watch it without feeling like a pervert. Yeah, which was which was ideal. Um, anyway, the Glamour Girls, Lenny Kai, Judy Martin, they both started wrestling in the seventies. Uh, both trained by Moolah, 
And then they first tagged together in 1979, um, and they did tours of Japan, and but they became trainers themselves for Mula School. Um, they oversaw the training of Wendy Richter and Sherry, to name a few. Um, then when they got to the WWF in 85, they became tag team champions. It says it, it happened in Egypt, but that sounds a bit to me like one of those Rio de Janeiro fucking intercontinental <laughs> championships. So, I mean, I can't find any official fucking things other than the date and it was in Egypt. Uh, 87, they were back on the independence. Um, and then later on in 87, they came back to the WBF where then they were then called the Glamour Girls. They were just sort of Leilonica and Judy Martin until then. Back to the WBF where they were given Jimmy Hart as the manager, which was, uh, you know, a great mouthpiece for them. They were on the Survivor Series, the first Survivor Series, pretty cool. Um, the feud with the Jumping Bomb Angels over the titles. Uh, they were at Rumble 88 in a match with the Jumping Bomb Angels. They should have been at WrestleMania 5 against the Jumping Bomb Angels, but the match got scrapped. I don't know what reason behind it or what, but um, yeah, the match got scrapped, which would have been a pisser because that would have been a right fucking payday as well, wouldn't it? Not what just a massive you... stage. Hey, sorry. WrestleMania 5. Oh, right, yeah. You know, because it was kind of like the height of, of Jumping Bomb Angel and fucking... And, and Glamour Girl feud. You know, they got my whole year. In, you know? um, wasn't that on our quiz the other day? Is it, wasn't that fucking the biggest amount of buys? WrestleMania? Yeah, was yeah, apparently so. The first 10 or something anyway, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that would have been a right pisser for them. You know, fucking understandably pissed off that. Two-time tag team champion, though, in the WBF uh, ladies division. Um, it said on Wikipedia they were often pet because they were trainers for Moolah's school, and by this point they were established trainers. They're like ten years in, probably into their train into being trainers. Um, they're often paired against rookie teams to, you know, help them groom them a little bit. So uh, that was pretty cool. Then from 1990 they started at May, um, Ladies Major League Wrestling. Not quite sure who or what that is. 91, they were both in WCW, but as singles, not as, not brought in as a team. Uh, and then later on in 91, they were off to the LPWA, where they were tag team champions, where they were managed by Christopher Love, who was Burt Prentice, who still promotes today, uh, USA Championship Wrestling, he promotes in Tennessee, I think. And then the team was retired in about 95-ish. But, um, yeah, like certainly the top lady team that I know of you know, that I could think of, and it's someone I've always enjoyed watching. I did two tags and two singles. You did four tags, didn't you? Yeah. We might have crossed over on a couple of tags, to be fair, but... Okay. What did you have? You go first. Right, mine are all in order. I know, because they've all got the dates apart. Well, three of them from the WWF, so yeah. I know that they're the first three. Um, and... Hang on. Yeah, then it's the LPWA, which is the fourth one. So, yeah, they're all in order because the LPWA is from 91. The WF ones have actually got the dates on. So, we'll start with the first one. WWE, 1st of November, 1986. Um, against Candice Pardue. And um, not to be confused with Peggy Mitchell, but Penny Mitchell. Penny Mitchell. Yeah. I've heard of Penny Mitchell, but not Candy Spardu. Candy Spardu, yeah. Wow, there we go. No, I'm, I'm sure I've seen Penny Mitchell, though. Get out of my pub. You are? <laughs> Get out of my pub. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, this match was the best one out of the lot, actually, believe it or not. This was my favourite one out of the lot, yeah. And in fact, I'd say they probably got worse as the matches went on. Like, the last match was not good at all. And I really thought it was going to be. It wasn't. Um, I don't know why. It, things just didn't seem to click. Uh, the other three matches, though, the first two were really, really good. The third one was all right. Fourth one, not so much. But, yeah, but this one, uh, yeah, it was really good. So, 
like you said, I didn't know any of them. I don't even think I'd heard of Penny Mitchell either, to be fair. Um, and what year did you say they fucking became... When did they get the Glamour Girl's name? Because... The Glamour Girl's name is said on the wiki wiki. I mean, it's not done necessarily be true. 87. Right, yeah. Because my first two matches, they weren't called... Well, they never mentioned the Glamour Girls. It was just, you know, they just had the names, like... So, um... Yes, for the tag titles, women's tag titles, they're the champions at this point. Um, nice belts, aren't they? Very nice belts. Very much like the old NWA tag belts. They, they were nice. Yeah, very nice belts, actually. Um, so starting is Lilani Kai and Pardu. Um, I'm going to be right confused saying these fucking names. I don't know. But um, so the... the the, the tie up and Pardu gets Kai to the ropes and then gives it a clean break. And then they fucking tie up again. Same situation. Fucking Pardu gets Kai to the fucking ropes. Clean break again. But Lilani Kai pushes her over. She lands, she like takes a back bump. Lilani Kai jumps on her, like dives like a splash kind of thing. She rolls out the way. Lilani Kai fucking face plants the mat. Padu puts her in a hammerlock there and then on the floor, and they go into a little bit of uh, technicalisms on the floor, back and forth and stuff. Um, they go into a really fucking, really good spot here, yeah? and I'd never seen it before. I'll try to explain it. it. It's simple to do, but probably not simple to explain. So, um, so right, so basically, Padu has got um, Leilani Kai um, on the mat, like... So Lilani Kai's on her back. Pardue's got a leg because she's working on the leg. And it's kind of like a leg grapevine. But, you know, as Kai's on the mat and Pardue's standing, so they're like an L shape. She's kind of just yeah. like wrenching the leg, leg back a little bit. But it's a pretty cool spot because what happens is, as Lilani Kai's in trouble on the like line on her back with a leg in the air, as she's fucking wrenching it, um, Judy Martin comes in. Fucking... Pulls Pardu, like just pulls her, like I guess by the fucking head to the mat. So as Pardu goes to the mat, Lilani Kai ends up going from the floor to standing. So they've literally switched the leg grapevine, you know what I mean? Positions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she does that. As the referee's getting Judy Martin out, the other face comes in and does the same thing. So fucking they're back into the position they started. It's very you know cool. I mean? Yeah, so yeah. that's cool. And then fucking Judy Martin comes in again, but the face, uh, Pardu sees her and just fucking sweeps her leg with her hand and she takes a massive flying back bump. Fucking beautiful little spot. Like, really, really good. I'll, I'll, I'm going to nick that fucker. Um, I'll get fucking John to be the one taking the back bump, though. But yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll steal that one. Uh, that was a really nice spot. I liked it. Um uh, right, where are we? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, after she takes that massive back bump, uh, the face is tag. Now, she tags fucking Penny Mitchell. It's fucking clear as day. Tags her right there and then. Peg Penny Mitchell comes in. Gorilla Monsoon and Lord Alfred Hayes are on commentary. Gorilla comes out with a line. Well, there was no tag there. I seen it with my own fucking Elgins. There was a clear. T it wasn't even. It, <laughs> it wasn't even a blind tag. It wasn't even a tag behind the ref back or nothing. It was a fucking just a tag in front of every cunt, twenty thousand people. <laughs> I don't know what Gorilla was watching, but um, trying to make the faces look fucking shit, like you know. What I mean? <laughs> I was like, yeah, there was a tag. <laughs> um, uh, so, hang on, yeah. So, um, yeah, they're, they're working on Lilani Kai's leg a little bit. Uh, very good uh, back and forth wrestling between Kai and Mitchell. Um, uh, um, trying to find where we are now. So, Ma Judy Martin comes in. Fucking atomic drop by Mitchell on Judy Martin, and then fucking does one on Kai. I think Leilani Kai is still legal at this point. Um, 
Oh yeah, there was a pretty cool spot here as well. Judy Judy Martin does a slingshot on Candice Pardu, but not like not anywhere near the corner. So I'm thinking, how's this gonna go on? Like, because she ain't near the fucking turnbuckle to take it, but she does the slingshot, and as Candice lands, she kind of just does like a roll. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she takes the fucking, almost like she's taking a bump on the canvas, but she just rolls through with it. Like, so she took the slingshot, just kind of done like a forward roll from it, turns around and fucking drop kick. Like, fucking beautiful. Cool. Yeah, i never seen that, really. I don't think I've seen that before, but it looked really nice. Um, I've, seen, I've seen it done without the corner, you know, just into sort of like a front bump, but not into anything else that wasn't an attack on the person that was taking it. So, yeah, that's cool. Right, yeah. Um, I remember once, actually, going off topic here, I looked the right cunt. I was wrestling fucking... Um, I've done a three-day, three or four-day tour of Scotland about a few years ago, and I was wrestling, you know, Saxon from um, NXT UK, big dude, beard and that, and I was wrestling him. I had a really fucking bad back, and I couldn't fucking move. But I was just wrestling, and I was like, we can't do a lot, because we'd worked the night before, and we had a cracker. And this one was just fucking the shits because I couldn't move. My back was dead from the night before. So we do the fucking slingshot spot, like, in the corner. And I couldn't fucking... I was taking it, and I couldn't fucking, like, just move with it. It was all going to be him. And I was lying there. And as we'd done it, I was aiming for the corner to take it, like, front ways, as you do. I couldn't get there. And literally Superman threw the top of middle rope, ended up on the outside of the ring, looked the fucking... (laughs) <laughs> Look the right cunt, but yeah, um, I just fucking remembered it now talking about that. Yeah. It was probably one of the most embarrassing things I've ever done in the ring. Fortunate, fortunately, it's not on film, but the night before was, so it's not too bad, but yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, she does that fucking forward roll from the uh slingshot drop kick. Um, well, yeah, drop kick. Um, Kai runs in after that, takes a drop kick too. Then uh, all four, all four, uh, all four are in the ring now. Uh, they've got the all fours in the ring. The faces are on top of the heels. This was a pretty cool spot. So what happens is the <clears throat> the faces are on top. They switch the heels into each other. The heels switch, so the faces collide in the middle. They don't. Wow. They just like fucking bump into each other. Stagger, they're a bit dazed from colliding. The fucking two heels charge at them, they move, and the two heels clothesline each other. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. yeah that, I'll tell you what, though, this match, like, so much shit I haven't seen before. And I was just mm. watching it. I was like, I didn't think it would be shit, but, you know, just pleasantly surprised at how good it was. Like, it really, really was so good. Um, yeah, so they uh, clothesline each other. Lilani Kai's on Candice now. Very good Northern Light suplex. Gets a two count. Um, there was a bit here, like, fucking... Uh, yeah, I wrote it down here. I don't know if I was hearing the fucking idiots right, but if I was, then they're fucking odd because the fans were chanting shit, and I don't know if it's if they were chanting boring, if they were used to, like, the women wrestling or not. I don't know. It might not have been boring, but one of the commentators, it might have been Monsoon, said that the fucking... Fans are not showing their appreciation or something like that. I could be reading too much into it, but that's what it sounded like to me. And I thought, are these fucking idiots then? Because I was loving it. I was. And I don't know where it was. It might have been MSG. It looked, it kind of looked a bit like Madison Square Gardens. Without good and gorilla commentating as well. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so uh, anyway, towards the end, Judy holds Candice, uh, Kai comes off the top, moves out the way, nails Judy with, like, the fucking uh, double axe handle. Penny's on Judy. Judy fucking tags Lilani Kai in. Penny brings Kai in the hard way over the top. Boom. Slam. Fucking two count by Penny on Kai. Um, then Penny, Penny Mitchell's got Lilani Kai up for the fireman's carry. But instead of doing like a fucking Simone drop or anything, literally throws her over the front so she takes a massive front bump. That looked pretty crisp. Um, 
Judy breaks up that pin, then all four in again. Um, and as the referee's fucking losing control because all four women are in, she's getting uh, the referee's getting Candice out, and then Judy Martin hits a power bomb, and then the referee turns around and Leilani Kai's the legal one for the three. One, two, three, boom. That was the end of the match, but pretty pretty good match that fucking yeah, and you stuff as well. You are sorry? Big stuff in it as well. What stuff? Different, unique. Yeah, yeah, de- yeah. It was very, uh, very different. Like a lot of the shit I'd never seen before. Like really, really good stuff. So I was quite impressed with that. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, my all of mine are from the LPWA because okay. I haven't seen as much of that as I have the WF. So I thought I'll fucking do it all from there. So the Glamour Girls versus uh, Cindy Paradise and. Uh, Cheryl Russa, Russa, who were known as the Mighty Mites. Okay. Um, I hadn't seen the other two before. Um, but this is really fucking good, this one. Uh, like, really good. A nice, uh, a nice bit in it as well that's, you know, builds heat and psychology. Bill Anderson is the ring announcer who literally worked everywhere as a wrestler preliminary wrestler primarily uh you know but he's worked in in mexico and stuff in the mask and ring announcer for wbf and stuff as well christopher love is the manager of the golden uh, glamour girls who's burt prentice joe penicino and jim Cornette on the commentary um there's a massive fairy charm for Christopher Love because he's got like a crown on and fucking, you know. Oh, yeah. He's uh, he's the manager for them on my last match. Yeah. Oh. Um, Leilani Kai and Cheryl Rusa start. Uh, Rusa rolls away a couple of times, you know, like not that the Glamour Girls are big by any stretch of the imagination, but they were bigger than the other team. I suppose the mighty mites kind of says that they're mites. They're smaller people, aren't they? So they were only sort of, you know, more petite women. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of getting the, you know, the bigger against the smaller kind of shit going on. Um, that Cheryl with a drop toe old, bosh, fast as fuck. Um, Judy Martin in now versus uh, Cindy Paradise. Again, a lot of speed shit from this Cindy Paradise going round her and, and, you know, trying to keep away from her. Judy Martin's moaning all the time about um, oil on the other people, saying, you know, I can't get hold of her. She keeps slipping away, blah, blah, blah. Um, then Cheryl, the, sorry, Cindy Paradise goes through the legs of Judy Martin and tags. Um, Judy Martin tags as well. So we've got Leilani Kai and Cheryl Russo in now. Um, Judy Martin doing the strong stuff now, like showing off the fact that she's, you know, the bigger of the two teams the other girl slips out moaning about the oil again um on the apron the manager christopher love Bert Prentice, is with leilani kai handing her oil putting it in her hand so then when she gets in she's like rubbing it all over the other girl saying look that's why we can't do it like it's fucking brilliant this the referee asks for t- calls for time out mid-match asks for towels the towels come in, they give them, gives the towels to the baby faces and tell them they can fucking, you know, get some of bollock in. I thought that was really cool. Um, so then we've got uh, Christopher Love doing a promo at the desk while they're doing the toweling down, like with Pelicino saying about all the cheating shit going on. Whilst they're toweling themselves down, Glamour Girls jump the team and the match restarts again. Shitload of heel heat, like... Uh, from the Glamour Girls. Um, Cindy Paradise um, almost gets to the corner. Judy Martin knocks the other girl off. Uh, Cheryl Russo then tags in, hot tag. Um, but Judy Martin cuts her off in no time at all. And then the finish is right good. On Judy Martin's shoulders, lifts her over onto Lenny Kai's knee, straight in the gut. Have some of that. That's the yeah. finish. Um, but it, it was it was the psychology at the start of big team against small team kind of thing. The the G of rubbing each other, you know, rubbing the towel off, you know, to to say that they were cheating fuckers. Then the jump, then the heat, then the finish. So um, no, it's really good. 
very much, very enjoyed it. And, um, you know, caught out on the commentary. It's bound to be fucking good, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, my next one, I've actually wrote, at the end of it, I've wrote really good, whereas the first match I wrote pretty good. So I'm thinking this one could actually be better, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But we'll see how it goes, and I might remember more as it goes along. Uh, so the second one, again, they're not called the Glamour Girls here. It's the 16th of March, 87. Tag title match again from prime time, and it's against Velvet McIntyre and Angie Minnelli. I've not heard Angie Minnelli before. No, I haven't. Obviously heard of Velvet McIntyre, but... Um, yeah, she was at WrestleMania too, wasn't she? Mm, she was. Um, so the no start shoes. is it no shoes on Velvet McIntyre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the start of the match is pretty cool. The fucking the heels are in the ring, both heels are in the ring, both faces are in the ring. The heels decide to get out but just stand on the apron, just chit chat and shit. As the chit chat and shit, the faces just run up and give them a double drop kick, boom, off the apron they go. That's the start of the match. Fucking Kai brought in over the top by Manelli. Fucking tags McIntyre in. Double whip, then a knee to the gut by McIntyre. Uh, all over Kai, uh, all on the arm. Um, hang on, where are we at? Trying to, trying to, I can see what I wrote, what I wrote but I don't understand what the fuck I'm on about. Hang on. So, um, I want to Oh, yeah, McIntyre does the fucking, uh, the old fucking x Park kick to the gut backflip thingy, majiggity. Um, I've wrote something here, but I don't know what I mean, so we'll skip that part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking, I've wrote it just before the x Park bit. I've put the spot where one of the face... Oh, yeah, I do get it. We'll go back to it now. There we go. On. So right. this, this came just before the X-Pac bit. So fucking, what, it's simple as well. It's just the way I've wrote it out. Fucking. Uh, so the one of the face grabs the other face in like the atomic drop thing. And then the heels run in and like they use the other face to drop kick them. You know what I mean? So they pick them up and boom. They do that on the faces. Then they go into the McIntyre doing the X-Pac backflip thingy. There we go. Got there in the end. Um, right, yeah. Uh, right, just got that in. Then, uh, yeah, uh, then uh, Lalani Kai tags Martin in. Martin in. Uh, they work on the arm of McIntyre, but switches it, starts working on the arm of Judy Martin. Fucking crossbody by McIntyre fucking beautiful i can't really explain it but she does like a fucking just a running cross body but like it's fucking i don't know how she does it but as she's fucking doing it so like she's in midair cross body about to go down into the pin but as she's literally made contact with her opponent i think it was kai or one of them uh no, Martin. It's on Martin. Um, she does like a fucking... Let's just say I'm doing a crossbody on you and my head is that way, like going to your left. But in midair, as we're like chest to chest, she kind of turns, like spins, so her head ends up on your right side. you know what I mean? So it's like... Okay. Yeah, it's like a crossbody, but she literally does a fucking 180 type thing in midair as she's like touching you, like it's really, really fucking bizarre. Like, I don't... It looks so easy as well. It looks like you're fucking... It's, it looks like you're fucking... What you would do with your action figures if you're playing with them. Because it's the only way I can fucking... <laughs> like, I don't know how you can do it. Like, it's just odd. But it looks so just normal. It just looked like a normal fucking spot. But really cool it was. I quite liked it. I mean, I won't try it myself, but it looked all right. Um, yeah, does the crossbody? Uh, 
two count. Um, actually, I think it was on Lalani Kai, not Martin. Anyway, Kai Kai ends up back in control, uh, misses a leg drop. Uh, then McIntyre gets back in control, and then this perfect fucking psychology here, fucking beautiful. So McIntyre's in on Kai, does the exact same fucking crossbody, yeah? Crossbody, goes for the fucking spinning situation, ends up on the other side, but this time ends up into a backbreaker by Kai. You know what I mean? So she does it, and then they don't go down into the pin. She ends up fucking on her leg, or on her knee. Beautiful. Look great. Um, that starts the heat. Um, McIntyre keeps trying to fight back, but ain't really fucking happening. Real, real good heel work here from the heels. Just fucking real good, good stuff. Um, they do the same spot as the last match where they miss the double axe handle and hits the fucking heel, the other heel. Um, hot tag and uh, Manelli's in. Monkey flip on Kai out the corner. Fucking brings Martin in over the top. All four in again. It's a similar finish to the last one as well. But um, there's just no fucking like switch. It's literally just a, just a powerbomb finish. Whereas last time all four were in. And- yeah, there was a couple of twists and turns, weren't there? Um, there wasn't that. It was just still the same like powerbomb finish. The referee turned around one, two, three. But really good, actually, this match. I remember it now. It's probably, possibly better than the first match. But both of them were really good. But this one sticks out the more I remember it now. Yeah. So. Sweet. Um, my next one is still LPWA versus Bambi and Magnificent Mimi. Um, there's a promo at the start with the Glamour Girls, just the Glamour Girls, saying that they're the queens of wrestling. And then they come to the ring with the Sheik Adnan Al Casey, you know, fucking as in General Adnan from the WWF. All right, yeah. Which it, uh, I don't think he was mentioned in the Wikipedia that I read, but he was there anyway. Uh, Ken Resnick from WWF and AWA doing the commentary. He hosts the um, LPWA DVDs that I've got in the videos um, right, with nice. Sergeant Slaughter doing the commentary. Right from the start, um, Mimi with a drop kick and a big head scissors on Leilani Kai. She pulls Judy Martin in, um, takes the arm, tags in Bambi. Bambi in quick and does the 10 punches. It's over as fuck. Really loud crowd here, like popping for everything the baby faces do. Um, Mimi then back in on the arm. Judy Martin cuts her off. Mimi leaps. Ducks a line crossbody to Judy Martin. Um, but like immediately Martin's up and cuts her off and she looks fucking angry now. I, I really like how, how pissed off Judy Martin always looks in these matches. You know, she looks like a scary motherfucker. <laughs> like, I, you know, fucking when she's pissed off, it looks fucking, she looks wild. Um, Leilani Kai now in, uh, runs Mimi into, uh, oh, she does like a fucking. A right nice flying sort of forearm, very Tito santana but with both her forearms. Oh, yeah. Really good. yeah. I don't know whether she catches with the hands or with the forearms or what, but it looks really good. Um, and then there's loads of heel stuff again. You know, your standard fucking back rakes and eyeballs and all that shit. Um, great teamwork, though. Like, the timing's fucking brilliant on these glamour girls. Uh, big boot from Judy Martin. Magnificent Mimi fires up on Leilani Kai. Leilani Kai just fucking clocks her to cut her off. And then they say, look, fucking Ken Resnick say that the referee, which I didn't recognise, right? I've never seen the referee before, but I doubt either of us would have seen him. So I don't know whether it's the real him or whether it's just him being called him. Eddie Sharkey. Oh, well, possible because he did do a lot of reffing, didn't he? Yeah. Now, I've never seen Eddie Sharkey. And if I have, well, if I have, I wouldn't have fucking known him. But we talk no. about him all the fucking time, don't we? Being like the trainer of all he's, these people. He's one of them guys that like every fucking knows, but they just don't know what he looks yeah. like. He's just like a fucking like a biblical character or something. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? That's what he is. 
<laughs> just, uh, just you, you can't picture a voice on radio, can you? Like, how they're going to look? It's yeah. Like um, yeah, apparently, Eddie Sharkey is the referee. Anyway, Bambi's in now after a hot tag. Fucking hot as fuck. Place is booming. Everyone's fucking arms are waving and they're standing, throwing babies in the air. Elbow to Leilani Kai. Slam to Leilani Kai gets a two. A, se- a second slam gets a two. Bambi leaps Leilani Kai. Uh, you know, Leilani whips her, ducks her head, leaps over the top. Um, as she hits the ropes the other side, Judy Martin with a kick in the back. Pow. Pin home. What a beautiful finish. Ah. Just like that. Can't fault that match in any way. Ah. Fabulous. Sheik had none how Casey uh, was just there. He didn't do anything or anything. Um, but can't fault that match in any way. Fucking brilliant. So, um, my next one is from the first of the ninth, I assume, 88. Um, tag title match again against the Jumping Bomb Angels. I thought I'd put one of them ones in there. Um, There's one of them on there on YouTube, isn't there? Fucking loads of them. Yeah, they're all fucking them, practically, mm. 90% of them. Um, they've got the name now, and they're blonde as well. Now, both blonde. Yeah. And silver suit, uh, gold suits, rather. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I got fucking confused in this a bit, because I didn't know the Jumping Bomb Angels, like, who was which, so I never knew who was in. Like, That's why we need, uh, we need Thomas J. Curtis to help us with that one. Yeah, he'd fucking know. He'll know when they're born and everything, he will. So, um, but yeah, I ain't got a clue. So, I've just put, at the start, it's a shine by an angel. I don't know what one. On mine. Song. You are? Sounds like, take, sounds like I could take that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, shine by an angel on Martin, tags the other angel in, and then the angel gets rammed into the heel corner, tags Lilani Kai. They do like a knuckle lock. Kai's in control, but then they do the old back roll by the angel uh, from the knuckle lock. She's in control now. Great running knee by one of the angels. Fucking beautiful, like just a running knee. Bam. Fucking then turns around into a drop kick. Boom. Fucking... Martin feeds to the corner where Lilani Kai is, but fucking Lilani Kai is like, nah, you're all right, you carry on. She ain't wanting the tag. Um, but finally, she does tag. Um, great work by, yeah, great work by this angel, fucking arm work, but doing a lot of fucking, like, rolling, you know, locking the arm between the legs and shit, like, real fancy fucking intricate, like, work on the arm. Um I'm not even going to attempt to fucking explain it. It just looked pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, then, yeah, works on the arm of Martin. Arm work, tags by the angels, some good, like, quick, like, fucking almost, like, rocker-esque type quick tags by the angels. Uh, then they do the, uh, one of the angels does the wrist lock. She's got her by the wrist. She climbs to the top and does, like, the fucking Eddie Guerrero type, you know, arm drag, wrist lock roll. Yeah. Um, cut, then Kai reluctantly tags in. Fucking the, the heels are not wanting to tag each other. Like, um, Then they, they do, like, a the double fucking, I think it's, like, called the octopus stretch. It's like a abdominal stretch, but with your fucking leg over the neck kind okay. of thing. Johnny Kidd likes to stick one of them on, don't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you're supporting all his fucking weight as well at the same time. Because he's wrapped around your leg. He's yeah. wrapped around your left leg, your fucking arm and your head. So, yeah. So, yeah, they do a double one of them. Um, really good double teams by the Angels. Uh, hang on. Um, and then where are we now? So, um Oh, yeah, this was a fucking cool spot as well. Never seen this one. I'll steal this one. I can do this. Um, fucking, so, uh, one of the angels, I don't know what one, we'll say number one, has got fucking, got Leilani Kai's, like, leg 
like got her by the ankle as Lilani Kai is trying to fucking reach the tag. So almost as if like it's usually the face in that position trying to reach the fucking tag and the heel, but it's the opposite way around. So the face has got Lilani Kai's ankle. Lilani Kai is trying to get the tag to Judy Martin. Um, Judy Martin comes in and fucking pulls Lilani Kai closer to the heel corner. And then the other angel comes in, grabs the other ankle. So it's two on one. You know what I mean? And then Bob fucking. The war, isn't it? Yeah. And then because there's obviously two angels and only one fucking Judy Martin pulling, they mm. pull, they get the better. And Judy Martin takes a massive flying front bump. Fucking look beautiful. Real good stuff that was. Never seen that before either. Um, uh, yeah, all angels at this point. Simple cut off. I can't remember what the cut off was. I think they just took control at one point over um, the angel. Uh, the angel, one of the angel one, does get a tag, and then they do go straight into heat on angel two. There's a couple near tags and stuff, but um, he was back in control. Uh, finally, angels do tag, and there's a massive fucking pop. Like really fucking when they got that tag. It wasn't even like a fucking, it wasn't like a massive heat where like like Rock and Roll Express would build the tag for ages. It wasn't like a long heat. It just, but when they got that tag though, the fucking crowd went, you know, bananas. Um, does the, uh, one of the angels does like the atomic drop, but like not on the knee, just drops them right on their ass on the mat. Does that like both of the, both of the heels? Uh, cleaning house here if the angels are um one of the angels does like a northern light super some sort of suplex bridge but it didn't quite go on right because the hill sh- i can't remember what, who it was on but the hill shoulder was nowhere it was closer to the fucking lights than it was to the mat it wasn't <laughs> fucking, you know it wasn't like anywhere near so the referee was like nah i ain't counting that and he didn't count it and um, which was good but yeah um uh oh yeah there's a nice little spot here where that it's like a running spot where i can't remember what he was in the ring but the angel just like a fucking international type running spot where the heel ducks down the angel leaps her as she's running hits the ropes but the heel on the outside just grabs her hair and she fucking takes a massive like back bump really fucking nice that did um uh, yeah, then like the finish was pretty simple actually. It was just the fucking front suplex by one of the heels. I can't remember what one just lifts them up for the suplex, drops them fr- face first. One, two, three, just like that. Boom. Um, yeah, uh, it was it was okay. This match, it was it was all right. Um, really good spots in it. It was probably the weaker of the first three, but it was still pretty, pretty good. <coughs> I enjoyed it. Well timed tag stuff by the sound of it, like. You're sorry? Well timed tag stuff by the sound of yeah, it. You know? it. It looked like they'd worked together a lot, which I, I, I think had, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Not just the WWF, they'd done the tours of Japan and stuff as well. You know, yeah. so. Um, I wonder what, if you reckon, you reckon when, when the Angels, I guess, like, because they're obviously Japanese now. When they went over to the States, you reckon they probably fucking had a say-so who they work with type thing? Because they work with them a lot, didn't they? So you reckon they'd... I know. They wouldn't know, but like... You'd have thought... It would, because... It makes sense to do it anyway, wouldn't it? Because in those days as well, you could, it wasn't like... You could do the same match or the same pairing every day for fucking six months because no one else knew. Yeah. You couldn't do it now, could you? But, you know... It just makes just makes sense. Um, my last two are singles matches, one of Leilani's and one of Judy Martin's. Uh, yeah. Two of my favourite ladies in this one, Leilani Kai and Malaya Hosaka. Um, Ken Resnick introduces it, so it's like it's off one of the DVDs because he's at a desk, you know, fucking very much like the DVDs are. Bill Anderson's ring announcer again. They're both in the ring for the announcement. And right from, from the fucking ding ding, Malaya Hosaka with two drop kicks, Bosch. Um, reverse the whip. Um, off comes Malaya Hosaka with another drop kick, then a drop toe hold. 
uh, where she works the le- Malaya Hosaka works the leg a little bit, sort of with Leilani Kai on her belly, sort of figure four in the legs. Uh, Joe Penasino and Jim Cornette commentating. They make reference to Malaya Hosaka being called the sort of female version of Great Muta, which I can see that, you know, in her in her style. Um, Malaya Hosaka then misses a leg drop on the leg, you know, as she's working Leilani Kai's leg, misses that, and then. Leilani, uh, Leilani Kai runs her head to the mat, slam, gets a two out of the slam, snap mare with her hair, she whips Malaya Hosaka off, and she comes back, uh, Malaya Hosaka comes back with a head scissors into like a victory roll, which was very cool. Uh, then up gets Leilani Kai on the ropes, Malaya Hosaka sort of attacks her with the knees, um, Leilani Kai gets her in the corner, like sort of struggles into the corner, lifts her up and puts her in the up on the top, like she's going to do something up there. All of a sudden, Malaya Hosaka with the sunset from the middle, which looked very cool. Um, Leilani Kai cuts her off again. She stand on like those subtle heel things, you know, like standing on her hands and just fucking, you know, sly little digs. Uh, that's real cool. Big funk, big boot from uh, Leilani Kai, and she bites her fingers. Fucking walks over and Malaya Hosaka. Um, Malaya fires up, uh, whips her. Comes Kai comes back. She gets hit with a spinning kick. Fucking big pop for that one. Then a second one uh, goes for the pin. Gets the two. Whips Kai off again. Goes for the drop kick. Leilani Kai holds on. Malaya hits the mat. Fucking Leilani Kai with the elbow, Dobbs are Fabulous. Right. Action, psychology, marvellous. Can't go wrong. Sounds all right. Well, uh, my last one um, was a bit shit, to be fair. I thought I was quite looking forward to it because it was LPWA and I hadn't seen a whole lot of it. But it was against Team America. Right, which is uh, Heidi Lee Morgan. Yeah. And someone else. Misty Blue <laughs> Sims. Misty Blue Sims, there we go. Yeah. Um, I just think that, I just don't think they meshed on this. I don't know if it was... It, they might have worked together a million times, but this specific match, it just things didn't click you just get that the sims are good i think you got sorry Heidi lee morgan and misty blue sims are pretty good so yeah. they, you know fucking shit day in it you just you get that don't you you could be in there with the fucking best work in the world and if it don't mesh sometimes it just happens doesn't it? then you have another match the next night and it's fucking great so just one of them things but yeah like the heels come out Massive heel reaction, like they fucking not even doing anything. They're coming out with that fucking fairy dude, and yeah. uh, the, the crowd are fucking hating them before they've even got to the ring, like you know, which is always an added advantage, isn't it? Um, tag title match. Uh, there's a there's a double a double shine at the start by the faces, and um, they do like a fucking. This is when I thought the match was going to go a bit odd. Well, go a bit not so great because it kind of it went a bit dodgy at the start, and sometimes when something goes wrong at the start, it kind of sometimes yeah, is hard. Throws, throws the old lot off, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what happened basically. So they do a, a double shine at the start, and then the faces are in the middle. The heels charge them. I'm guessing the faces are meant to move and the heels are meant to collide it didn't go on and one of the heels ended up on the floor but i don't think she made contact with the face i don't know what the fuck happened but one of the heels is left standing the other heels on the floor and it just looked a little bit like you know shit happens but yeah it just looked a bit odd um team america do take control on uh judy martin uh, they do a. It's only. It's a fairly short match. Uh, they cut off. I can't remember what the cut off is, but they cut off on one of them, and then they give the they give heat on one of the faces. But I don't know which is which. To be fair, 
Um, they do that um, assisted duck buster thing that you were on about earlier, over the top, boom, um, which is a beautiful move. It really is good. Um, Kai misses a drop kick, and then the face tags. Uh, they cut off, and then they're into the heels corner. Other face comes in, fucking... I've put here that I'm confused as to what's going on, so I can only imagine what the fuck you are if you're not seeing the fucking match. But I was confused watching it a little bit. It was a bit sloppy. Like, I didn't know who was legal. I didn't know what was going in. Like, the manager got a lot of heat. The manager was great. Like, you know, getting the fucking fans all riled up and stuff. Um, Great heat reactions from the crowd. Fucking really good, uh, good stuff. But, yeah, like, just a lot of shit just didn't seem to click. Like I say, they could have worked a million times and had great matches. But this was just wasn't one of them this just might have just been a bad day at the office you know but um the, there's some good like bits where the the face is pinning a heel and then the man like near the ropes one two and the manager's there and will fucking pull the hair of the face that's pinning them like as the ref's counting to actually see doesn't see the hair pull and the fans are getting right riled up so it's you know Although the match is sloppy and not very good at all, the crowd are more than happy with it. Like because you know they're they're still pretty loud, especially during the the heel stuff. So um, anyway, Kai Kai misses a top rope splash, and then a top rope drop kick by the face. Looks like it's going to be a th- like a fucking three count, but then the time limit draw goes, and uh, so that's that was the end of the match. I have wrote at the end it was poor because I think the match quality was pretty poor considering what I was expecting. But the, the fans, you know, it, like I always fucking judge my matches on how the fans react. And it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? So if if I I don't do a lot or if I have a match that I think is a little poor, but the fans are fucking up for the whole thing, then it's not really a bad thing. So I'm sure the fans were in attendance were more than happy with it. It's just... Yeah, and it was a different era then when you think in 1990 or whatever that would have been 1991 whatever like the other than Dave Meltzer no fucker was there rating matches it was just you know what happens in the ring that day and it was still perceived as a fight wasn't it yeah which is if it was still like that now there wouldn't be any fucking there wouldn't be half as much negativity surely no because like I, I even even to this day, I don't, I try to watch it as a fan. Like, you know, I, I don't really think about, like, there's so many fucking matches that I enjoy that you kind of enjoy this, you know, this, the same kind of matches and there's fuck all to it. But yeah. like, apparently fucking Meltzer, who's fucking got an IQ of a fucking polo, like fucking doesn't, like, apparently he judges matches on work rate. Like, he doesn't give a fuck about the actual work itself, like working. It's the work rate. That's literally what I've fucking read, that that's what he judges them on. So, you know, to me, it's a kind of a stupid way to judge them on because every match is going to just be like boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? But then he shits on fucking, like, I think, I'm sure I read Hogan and Rock, which was way past Hogan's prime, but fucking one of the best matches he was ever involved in and he was way past his prime and he shot on it like because they didn't do fuck all but they didn't need to because yeah. of you know so like you say about Mouser judging things on work rate the problem just as much as him judging it on work rate is the fact that the wrestlers judge it on work rate as well now yeah you know like to do nothing you're seen as a fucking idiot into the wrestler's eyes. Yeah, you're seen as lazy, aren't you? Like, yeah. it's, it's lazy. Well, no, it's not lazy because if you watch, if you, let's say you're on fucking second and then you've got a match on third and the third match is, you know, you know, you can kind of judge where you are on the card, but you can also judge who else is on the card. So if you're working a much bigger guy that ain't, you know, and then you've got the two cruiserweights that are on just after you, like, what they're gonna shit on your match and praise the one after you just because they do more? Like it's all backwards to me. Like you know, yeah. fucked. Anyhow, my last one. 
This was my worst one, the worst one that I watched of these as well. But I say that, but it shows Judy Martin's fucking excellence at the same time. Right, okay. Because she was wrestling somebody who at the time would have been green as grass, bit of a meathead, muscle head, you know, somebody that she had to guide, clearly, you know, and, and it shows. You see how green she is, but yet how good she guides her. Um, Judy right. Martin versus Terry Power, who became Tory in the WF. I was just about to fucking say that because that's the first time I seen her it was on that LPWA, and um, at the time I didn't know it was her until I think I might have read it in a magazine, like that it was the same person because I remember her from there. So, oh. um, this I mean, it says on the video that it was 1986, which it clearly wasn't because LPWA didn't start till fucking 90. Um, <laughs> And Terry Power didn't start till 88 in wrestling anyway. And she was only a valet for for the first part in uh, Portland. I, I, I googled her after to get a bit more info. Um, yeah, she was a manager of Scotty the Body in Portland. All right. For the first, you know, for the first short while. So this was kind of like the first break into actual wrestling for her. Right, you know, okay. like in-ring wrestling. Um <laughs> So, Judy Martin, right from the start, looks pissed off. I'm scared already. I ain't going to lie. Uh, Ken Resnick and Nick Botwinkle are commentating here. Um, Judy Martin jumps her right from the start. See? So, kind of, like, clever already because you don't have to fucking worry about someone that can't lock up because you jumped her. Um, reverse the whip and an elbow by uh, Terry Power. Elbow can't go wrong, can you? Um, Judy cuts her off. Throws her out of the ring. Judy Martin kicks her off the apron. Attacks her near the ropes, like keeps trying to stop her getting in. She gets back in eventually, throws her out the other side. I think I said this about fucking Anki Man and Virgil. If you keep the like, if Anki Man did the same thing to Virgil, kept throwing her out. No matter how green you are, if you're out there, it kills a bit of time, doesn't it? Right? Um, <laughs> On the apron the next time round, Terry Powers blocks a punch and then fires up a little bit. Then snap mares Judy Martin and puts a chin lock on, which is a strange thing to do for a baby face mid match, but um, it is what it is, isn't it? It's at least she's doing something good on her. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of air in this chin lock, though, like fucking virtually see through. Um, Judy Martin to the ropes. Judy Martin then offers a test of strength, which is a fucking stupid thing to do when Terry Power is this big. Um, they lock up the test of strength, and it's pretty even to start with, which shocked me because I thought Terry Power would be like, bosh, how that? Um, but then down goes Judy Martin, up comes Judy Martin, and a headbutt. Um, now the finish is right good as well. So headbutt, down goes Terry Power. Here's the finish. Judy goes to slam her, literally mid-air, Terry Power sort of wiggles herself, holds on, rolls her over, and pins uh, Judy Martin, jobs a good one. Uh-huh. So the worst of the, of the four matches, but I mean, there was some fucking cracking, like three good matches I watched before that. Um, and no matter how green Terry Power was, she looked amazing. Like, where else are you going to find a fucking woman with a body like that? Or that or, you know. Um, Judy Martin did everything she could to make her look amazing, and the finish was fucking brilliant. So all in all, I liked them all. Like I can't fucking, I really did proper. Um, Boom. Monday we're doing doink. Uh-huh. Then we're going to have the week off, and we'll be back the following Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah. Have you got your? Uh... Did we choose a promotion? Yeah, Mid Atlantic. Oh, that's the fucker. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do doing this coming Monday. Then not that Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, Mid Atlantic. Yeah. You chose doing. I chose Mid Atlantic, and it's your tag team pick for what is in essence two weeks today, isn't it? Yeah. 
Right. What you got? Well, you ready for this one? I like tag team week because I never know who to pick. It's always like, you know, there's fucking millions in there. So I'm going to go with someone. I put, when I first thought of them, I thought we've fucking done them because we've done so many. It's fucking hard to remember. But um, I'm 99.9% sure we've not done them. Um, so anyway, they, they, they were around for quite a long time, but they weren't in the WWF for very long um, as a team. So um, I'm going to go with the Beverly Brothers. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. I think I uh, I don't forget. you are. Yeah. So the, the, before that, then they were um, the construction crew, crew or something. Enos and Bloom. Yeah. Yeah. They're also called Minnesota the Min- Wrecking Crew, Volume Two. In What's the man. Like yeah. Managed by yeah. by Oli, right? It's what? They were managed by Oli, weren't they? Oh, were they? I don't know, because I didn't know they were called that. I I'm, I totally uh, haven't seen them. I just kind of found out about that today. Um, yeah. That, that, so... At the time, this is like 1990. At the time, they were still working in the AWA. Right, but okay. The AWA was going down the shit pretty quick, you know, pretty rapidly. I mean, I loved the AWA that period, because I kind of liked that kind of shit. But because um, it was going down the shit pretty quick. The money was starting to dry up, so they started working for WCW, but they didn't want their faces seen, so they agreed to do it in the bonnets. All right, okay, makes sense though. It's quite a clever fucking maneuver, that to be honest, isn't it? Like, you wouldn't fucking know who it is though. <laughs> you, know, like, you can imagine fucking Vern Garnier watching it, going, "Look at these two cunts here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just say Doink Monday, and then. A week Wednesday, Mid Atlantic, and the Beverly Brothers. Any Doink, fabulous. I'm so Any... fucking ready. Doink is possibly my favourite pick that we've ever done. Yeah, because it's it's so varied, isn't it? It's like you can fucking. I love the gimmick anyway, but there's so many people that have portrayed it, so it's like it, it's such an interesting, you know, an interesting. It's about in three that is Doink, Mid Atlantic, and the Beverly Brothers. It's fucking It'll... brilliant. Three. That is a good mix, isn't it? Definitely. Bosh, right. Uh, see people Monday for Doink and the Clowning. <laughs>